Assalamualaikum and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Akila and uh, today my group is going to present about coral reef. Next. Okay, what is coral reef? The definition of coral reef is an underwater ecosystem characterized by reef building system. These are some examples I got uh, for the coral reef locations in Malaysia, such as uh, Tun Sakara Marine Park in Sempurna, Sabah and Tunku Abdul Rahman Park in Sabah. And the second one, which is outside Malaysia, uh, Red Sea Coral Reef, Red Sea, and Rainbow Reef, Fiji. Second, I'm going to pass this to my uh, group mate. All right, so hello, everyone. I'm going to continue with uh, sharing to you guys about marine animals uh, found in coral reef. So the first one is blue ring octopus or we can call it Hapalokleina. Its characteristic is it usually can be found in pale brown colors. The blue marking uh, can be found when it is agitated or hunting. You can still find it uh, when it is not agitated, but it is not clear like the picture. And then it is covered with papillae that give a rough appearance. For the adaptation and survival, it has chromatophore, which allow them to blend with the surrounding. In some cases, you can see this blue ring octopus, uh, not in pale brown colors, but in like pink purple color. And then it is flexible. It can switch to tiny areas in the size of their eyes. For the second animal is parrotfish. So parrotfish has a striking bold color it has a bird-like beak and feed on algae and coral. Uh, in a large damaged uh, reef, we can find uh, more parrotfish. As uh, when the coral bleach, the tendency of algae to settle on the bleach coral is high. The survival of parrotfish is influenced by their alertness. Uh, uh, okay, and then the survival of parrotfish is influenced by their alertness. So during the day, it is so hard to get closer to them because they are so active and they spend their day scraping off algae. Uh, while at night, they hide into nooks and crannies. To make sure they don't uh, get attacked by predators, they will form a cocoon made from their mucus. Uh, and for the third animal is surgeon fish or paracenterous hepatitis. It has a disc shaped body. It has between 8 to 28 teeth. It has 16 to 20 gill spines. So they keep coral reef surfaces clear by feeding on algae that may damage the reef. Uh, the natural blue color makes them almost invisible to predators. Next, honey. Honey, okay, that? Louder, honey, louder. Tak kuat. Lagi kuat lagi. Next, for the marine plant in the coral reef is a coralline red algae or Rhodophyta species. Small character characteristic is recognized by its hard cellulose and it undergo photosynthesis. For adaptation, for adaptation, it produces calcium carbonate in form of Sulfate cement that help in the strain less than calcium carbonate produced by coral. They form in tidal ridges at the chest. Form in tidal ridges at the chest of the reef that protect from the full force of the ice oceanic waves. The second. The second marine plant that live in the coral reef is a Zantale or Symbiodium species. For characteristic, 
horizontally in uh, the wish he he live in the issue. Ah, uh, again, my dear, louder, yeah. You keep going fainter and fainter. Horizontally. Four characteristic horizontally. Horizontally in which he lives in the tissue of the polyp. Horizontally is a type of horizontally as a dinoflagellate algae and it has a golden brown color. Skin is a type of the plant. Horizontally undergoes photosynthesis to provide oxygen as well as nutrients for their host. In, in exchange, coral gives carbon dioxide and flesh place to live for horizontally. This relationship is known as symbiotic relationship. For last but not least, marine plant that live at the coral, coral reef is the grasses or phyllospedic species. It has a long green grass. grass Again, louder. It has a long green grass grass like leaf and it also undergo photosynthesis for adaptation and survival it has a flexible blade that resistant to the water movement and it also has a space special salt tolerance gene that allow the sea grasses to have more sodium than the salt water Um, these are the abiotic factors that are important um, for coral reefs. The first abiotic factor is temperature. Uh, if the ocean temperature uh, is increased, which comes from the greenhouse effect, it can increase the uh, frequency of coral bleaching. Um, the next abiotic factor is oxygen, where low, availab low availability of oxygen would limit the zooxanthellae's respiration. Um, the third abiotic factor is tides, where low tide causing the corals to be exposed to the outer surroundings, surroundings thus um, it can stress the corals. Um, for salinity, uh, if the salinity of water is high, it means that the water is denser and heavier and it will sink beneath less saline, uh, less saline and warmer water. So this can have an impact on the movement of ocean currents, thus affecting the um, coral itself. Okay, for uh, solar and en solar energy, um, zooxanthellae on corals need solar energy to produce food. Um, the substrate on coral reefs acts as the place or uh, acts as a place for society organisms to settle on. Um, for the nutrients, uh, the fertilizers that run off from the coastal can lead to rapid growth of algae growth. Algae growth. This will block the coral from getting the sunlight and and make the zooxanthellae cannot undergo photosynthesis. Um, for water clarity, the coral uh, corals need a better water clarity as it needs sunlight to ensure that the symbiotic algae or zooxanthellae get enough sunlight to continue the photosynthesis process. Um, waves also affect the coral reef because big waves such as tsunami would crash, crash the reef's area. Um, aerial exposure causes, uh, if, the, if the corals are exposed to the outer surroundings um, for a prolonged time, it will make the coral stress Thus, it will promote the event of coral bleaching. And for the currents, yes, ocean currents um, affect the coral reef because ocean current helps to disperse coral larvae as well as distribute food sources to zooplankton, uh, zooxanthellae. Okay. Um, for the case of study, we decided to pick on the topic of the effect of climate change towards the corals. So, will coral reefs be able to adapt to climate change? The answer to the question is yes. If only human reduce, if only human reduce the emission of carbon dioxide in a large scale. 
Um, based on a study funded by NOAA, the study findings emphasizes on the capability of coral reef to adapt to climate change in which large reduction of carbon dioxide emission will improve coral chances of surviving by the end of the decade, 2100. Um, the findings of the study also uh, emphasizes that corals have already adapted to part of global warming and the reef survival from high temperature has induced from 20% to 80%. And, uh, and the researchers also uh, stated that almost 20% of, of reefs has lost uh, globally due to high temperature. That's it. That's from us. Thank you very Thank much, you. Hubeid. Uh, again, also another similar comment, just for the parts with the physical parameters. Um, I know you want to make it short and sweet, and then, of course, you did the elaboration. But at least put points below each of those physical parameters, uh, short yet concise points about uh, what sort of temperature range, what sort of salinity range, etc. Okay? Okay, Grubeit? Do, do, okay, okay Doctor, no, thank you. Okay, thank you. And also, okay, actually, this goes out for all groups. Please, I beg you. Scientific name to italics on the line, please. All right. I don't, it irritates me so much that I keep saying and the same mistakes come over and over again. So please, before you upload that, please correct that part. Thank you very much. Now group 10. Thank you. Uh, hello, good evening. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Good evening, doctor and friends. We are from group 10 and our topic is marine ecosystem for Antarctic. Okay. So we'll start with the definition first. Antarctic, okay, they will uh, call Antarctic as a polar desert. What does that mean? Okay, desert, that, that is not an actual desert, but it is similarly, uh, I mean, it's similar to desert because uh, Antarctic is uh, very limited where like there are no trees or shrubs, there are terrestrial lives are very limited and very small. There are no trees or shrubs. So the most of the vegetations are mostly like uh, mosses, algae, and et cetera. The Antarctic ecosystem is very unique in that the food chains are all dependent and uh, like ba uh, mostly based on the availability of trails. Here is the picture of the trail, the left-hand side, uh, which is very vital for all animals, all, all life forms which lives in the Antarctic. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, we can say that all the food webs, I mean, uh, the food webs, all, all the marine lives are dependent on these krills where it, it's all started from here. So these little krills are, are playing a vital role in uh, uh, Antarctic marine ecosystem. Okay, next slide. Let's go for the location of uh, marine, uh, Antarctic marine ecosystem. Okay, uh, Antarctic marine ecosystem uh, located in the south southern uh, geographic pole i mean southern region of the uh, globe our earth where you uh, it is isolated it's completely iso isolated from the southern ocean where surrounding the antarctic there will be only southern ocean from other land masses it's completely iso isolated and um, the next slide please uh, these are the coordinates uh, for the Antarctic marine ecosystem, uh, 82 degrees south and 135 east. Uh, and this is, these are the maps for the Antarctic marine ecosystem, where, yeah, as you all know, there are two poles in our Earth, on our Earth, which is north and south, and northern region for the Arctic, and the southern region is the where Antarctic marine ecosystem is located. And uh, uh, unfortunately, Malaysians, we cannot witness this marine ecosystem because we are not uh, eligible, I mean, uh, we are not suitable uh, place for the marine ecosystem to be located. So next person, next slide. So next is uh, marine animals and their characteristics. So firstly is krill or their scientific name is Euphausia superba. So krill have rigid outer skeleton where they are shed the exoskeleton to distract predators. Secondly, it has ability to shrink bodies and undergo long periods of starvation to survive the winter to, to survive the winter and krill has small and hair like legs where it filter out the microscopic algae that bloom in the nutrient rich water next um secondly is 
uh, Weddell seal or its uh, scientific name is Lepto Nyko Nykoch Weddelli, where it's canine, it has canine and incisor teeth to rest, open the new eyes and maintain pulse through which to breathe. Secondly, it has a uh, vibrates or called as whisker, where it's able to find prey which are extremely sensitive to, to movement. And it also known as impressive diver where it will avoid their main predators such as orcas and leopard seal and searching for new breeding holes. Next. Lastly, for the marine animals is uh, emperor penguin or known as uh, are known as uh, Aptonidates forsetary, where this is the largest of all penguins, where it has height of half of the height of adult humans. Secondly, uh, uh, penguin is the social creatures where it will huddle together to keep warm and they do not defend any territory. Penguin also have waterproof coat in three layers of short oily feathers to keep warm also. And it also have strong claws to grip in their eyes and on their feet, they have special fat in feet to prevent from freezing. Next. So we are going to go to marine plants and their characteristic. Firstly, Antarctic hair grass, where uh, or its scientific name is Descas Descamsia antarctica, where it has complex and deep root system. Where this will keep them well and core within their habitats and easily absorb water and nutrients from their environment. Secondly, next. Uh, we have Antarctic pearwort, or called as Colobanthus quintensis, where we, this is a small plant that grows to around 5 cm tall, and it has more crucial light appearance and display by yellow flowers. Uh, basically, this plant is self-pollinated, where it uses the wind to bring pollen from one plant to another. Next. And lastly, we have uh, folios lichen, uh, or known as Flavo Parmelia caparata, Folius lichen able to exhibit net photosynthesis while frozen at temperature as low as 20 degrees Celsius. It also can absorb water from a saturated atmosphere when covered by snow and it can survive long and favorable periods of drought in a dry and inactive state. Next person. Uh, so next, we move to the key abiotic factor that important for the ecosystem. So the first one is temperature. Uh, the mean temperature at Antarctica is uh, negative 16 degree during winter, while negative 20 during summer. So the temperature is important for the organism in Antarctic because when there is change in temperature, it will cause declining in reproduction, food and habitat. For example, when the temperature increase, emperor penguin experience decline in number because of climate change as they break on sea ice. So the next one is sea ice. Uh, sea ice has special relationship with Antarctic krills because sea ice provides shelter for larvae and juvenile krill from predators during winter. It also provides food for krill as algae was trapped inside the ice which help krill to stay alive during winter. Uh, so number three is the ocean current. So ocean current able to carry nutrient and small organism for food supply and carry reproductive cell to a new places. For example, Antarctic krills lay their eggs up to 10,000 at a time on the sea, on the surface of water. And uh, another example is upwelling, which is the current motion that influence the distribution and abundance of Antarctic organism, where the when, which is when upwelling occur, it will bring nutrients with, uh, such as phosphate and nitrogen up to the surface, which give food for phytoplankton. And the last one is sunlight. Sunlight can influence the rate of photosynthesis of phytoplankton. For example, during spring, the ice in Antarctic will start to melt. This cause the algae and phytoplankton that trap inside the ice will free. The presence of sunlight will help the growth of phytoplankton and increase 
and it will help the growth of phytoplankton increase and it lead the bloom. Uh, as it as bloom occur, this cause Antarctic krill consume the algae as their food source. And next person. Okay, for case study, we choose the latest journal facing certain ocean warming, the temperature effects on whole animal performance of Antarctic krills. So in this journal, the as we know, climate change has causing ice melt and rising in water temperature. And uh, krill is the affected one in the Antarctic, which given an effect toward their growth threat, oxygen consumption, and sex specific difference in krill growth trajectories. So for growth rate, increase in the routine metabolic rate, they contribute to food limitation that may decline growth. And uh, the researcher assumed that the cream may be smaller and lighter in the future. For oxygen consumption, the metabolic rate increase and the higher oxygen consumption are needed to fulfill their energy demands. That means they need um, more uh, energy and more, more energy and more oxygen. Lah. Uh. And if for the sex specific difference, the 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 there there need different energetic requirement for male and versus female the in the research there there's no specific mention that climate change um climate change might be uh biased toward uh, one of the gender no but they are um apa? they're berkait dengan the punya energetic requirement that's all from us thank you Thank you very much, uh, Group 10. Um, again, similar uh, thing, although I like the elaborations for your physical parameters, but again, try to put a range for certain things. Or also, um, what do you call this? Uh, when you mentioned about nutrients, how the how the nutrients uh, functions in the polar region, but perhaps if you can add on a little bit more as to which nutrient plays an important part, it'll be also very good if you can, okay? And for Irfan's question regarding lichens are not plants, right? Well, technically, it's a symbiotic relationship of both a fungus and an algae. So, uh, by right, it's sort of a partial plant. It's not It's not an organism by itself. So, in this case, I tutup mata lah because at least it's, it is present to, and it's also an algae in a way. So, it's okay. Next group. Okay, next is group 13. So, banyak juga eh, group yang pergi untuk diving ni. Dahsyat ni lah. Okay, take it away.
Group 13, is everything okay? Hey, Doctor, what's up? Can everyone see my slide? Yes. Assalamualaikum and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today, my, my group will present about Abyssal Plain. So, what is Abyssal Plain? Abyssal Plain is a deep, flat sediment covered areas of ocean floor. And they have extensive submarine plates, hills, buoyots, and sea mount. Abyssal Plains also cover more than 50% of the Earth's surface. Where it can be found? Abyssal Plain usually found at depth between 3,000 meters to 6,000 meters. It is generally located between the foot of a continental rise and a mid-ocean ridge. The surfaces are very in-depth, starting from 10 to 100 cm per kilometer of horizontal horizontal distance. Abyssal plain more common in Atlantic Ocean that, than the Indian or Pacific Ocean. Abyssal plain around the world. The first one is Plate Basin. Plate Basin is a plain in the Atlantic Ocean which runs along the east coast of the United States. It starts in the northern part of the Bahamas and continues up toward New York. The next one is Hatteras Abyssal Plain. Hatteras Abyssal Plain is a plain forming the floor of the north, northwestern Atlantic Ocean. And the last one is Bellingholzen Abyssal Plain. It is a plain parallel to continental rise in the Bellingholzen Sea, which is located along the west side of the Antarctic Peninsula. Um, there are no abyssal plain in Malaysia because abyssal plain can only be found at the depth 3,000 meter to 600 meter, while in the sea depth, while the sea depth around Malaysia is only 200 meter. Next, I will pass to my groupmate. These are the animals that can be found in the abyssal plain. Uh, viper fish. Are you ni? Something is up with your mic. Hello. Hello. Okay, now okay. Hello? Hari ni tak jadilah. Tetap kali you buka, uh, try uh, uh, situation. So, uh, I think I Perfect. will cover ini. Oh, Farah. Lain, lain orang. Okay, okay. Take it away. Uh, what animals can be found in the abyssal plain? The first one is viper fish, and the second one is angler fish, and the third one is filler fish or tripod fish, and the next one is head fish, tube worms, octopus, and long neck clam. Um, uh, there are no plants in the abyssal so ab Abyssal zone because of the lack of sunlight that is necessary for photosynthesis. Okay, this way I will pass to Shaza. Okay, the physical features of the ecosystem. First, temperature. Experience little to no light or no rainfalls, making the water temperature in this zone typically range from negative 1 degrees Celsius to 4 degrees Celsius. Second, nutrient. The concentration of nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and silica are very uniform in abyssal water and are much higher than in overlying water. Third, dissolved oxygen. 
the oxygen level in the abyssal ecosystem remain constant given that cool water in the dissolved oxygen at a more stable rate compared to warmer water. Fourth, light av availability. The abyssal zone is its complete lack of light. Organisms in this ecosystem have evolved and adapted to cope with this factor by creating their own blue light, which is bioluminescence. The fifth is uh, pressure. It was very high, increases at one atmosphere, very every 10 meters depth. Next, the unique characteristic of the ecosystem. First, uh, most animals in the abyssal plain are tiny, but they have a huge stomach and large mouth. Since food is hard to find, they need to swallow as much as they can when they find it. They also preferably store some of it since their next meal could be a long time away. Second, Many abyssal animals are bioluminescent, which means that they can produce their own light. Since the deep sea is completely dark, the ability to produce light can help fish in luring prey, finding prey, or extracting mates. Next. Okay, the third one is they have behavioral adaptation like having left movement and reproducing slower due to it has it must be hard to find a mate in the vast dark depth. Fourth, most organisms on the abyssal plains are deposit feeder that eat that organism that sink to the ocean floor from the surface. Okay, next I will pass to Aisha. Okay, um, now uh, we're looking at for the case study. So the first one is the new species found at the abyssal plain. So the new species uh, is, is Cliopsilus chminke. Um, the new species is placed in the genus Cliopsilus because of its typical segmentation and the cetacean of the swimming lakes. So this species is very unique within the genus and can be distinguished from the other species by the large apical pore. And for your information, this new species is one of the four deep sea Clypsilus species described until today. And the second new, find, new case study is about the building of the Middle East to India deep water pipeline. So this uh, deep water pipeline is a deep water transnational a natural gas pipeline system that will cross the Gulf of Oman and the Arabian Sea. Uh, the imported gas will play a major role in bridging the demand supply gap in the Indian market. Um, the route will cross the gently sloping Oman shelf and then descend across the relatively steep and fractured Oman slope to the Oman Abyssal Plain. Uh, next. Okay, um, looking at the extra information about the formation of abyssal plain. These flat abyssal plains are underlain by the oceanic crust, which is predominantly basalt. So basalt uh, can be uh, better known as a dark, fine grain volcanic rock. Typically, uh, the basalt is covered by layers of sediments deposited by deep ocean turbidity currents or biological material such as made shells of marine plants and animals that have sink down from the ocean's upper level. The other components of abyssal plain sediment include the wind-blown dust, volcanic ash, chemical precipitates and occasional meteorite fragments. Uh, the abyssal plains are often littered with nodules of manganese containing uh, varying amounts of iron, nickel, cobalt, and copper. The total sediment deposition rate in remote areas is estimated at 2 to 3 centimeters per thousand years. And the structure of abyssal ecosystem are highly influenced by the rate of flux of food to the seafloor and the composition of matter that settle. Next slide. Okay, extra information for everyone. The attractive site, uh, the abyssal plain is attractive site for deep sea fishing and extraction of oil and gas and other minerals. And this abyssal plain uh, also is a polymetallic nodules of very metal concentration, such as manganese, iron, nickel, and cobalt. 
and these can be found there. And Abyssal Plain are a major reservoir of biodiversity with a wide variety of microbial life due to its vast sizes. Okay, that's all from us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice one.